Welcome back, Wolfers here. Looking to make games using Unity? Well, you have come to the right place. Let's get started. Alright guys, welcome. Uh, today I wanted to do something different. So instead of having pre-recorded the programming and whatnot, um, I wanted to do it more live, I guess. Um, so it, last time I asked you guys to um, to see, uh, give you a set of challenges. Um, so comment down below if you guys were able to do it. So we'll show you how I would do it. Um, the first challenge was to make the ball uh, bounce either up or down based on the paddle movement. Uh, so it will change its direction. And the other one was to change the wall bounds and make sure that whatever screen resolution we had, they would accommodate for that. Okay, so let's open up Unity and head over to our project. Alrighty, so this is what we have so far. We have a ball that bounces, and we can move the panel and whatnot. Um, let's open up our C sharp. Ooh, open C sharp project. I'm uh, getting this. I recently I had to uninstall everything, so I think it doesn't know what to do. <laughs> but there we go. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is we are going to change the uh, ball direction in, and um, pretty much have the ball change the direction based on what where we are, where the paddle is moving. So we're going to go into the ball collision script. So this is where we um, calculate the new direction uh, using the reflection for our ball when it hits anything uh, that is solid. So, let's see. First of all, we are going to need here, uh, since we need to talk to the paddle, um, we are going to have here the player paddle. Um, we'll just call it paddle. And for now, we're going to initialize it to be null, not none. <laughs> and once we hit here, before we actually do this part, we are going to check to see if this play, um, if we have the paddle here. Um, if we do have the paddle collision, um, that means that we're the paddle. So we want to actually get the, the um, paddle direction. And we want to check the pedal direction and see if it's going up or down. And based on that, change the new direction, right? So we're going to say pedal, pedal direction. If the Y is greater than zero, um, that means we're moving up and the new direction for the ball, if the y is going the opposite direction, so if it's less, then zero. And we also want to check the other one here. So if it's if we are going down and they are going up, then you want to just say new direction and just flip it. And to flip it, we just uh, multiply it by negative one. Okay. And okay, so what happens if the ball direction is just going from left to right? It's the, the y doesn't have any direction. It's zero, so it's just going to go on the x-axis. Uh, we still want to make sure that we can make it move up and up or down. So where? gonna do this if it's not zero so if we are moving up or down and the new direction 
y is it's zero. That means it's going straight, like straight across on the x-axis. It's not going up or down at all. Then we are going to do pretty much move it into this direction that we are going in. And we don't want to do the whole one, so we're going to scale it down by 25%. And that is it for that one. So now we can go back to Unity. And uh, let's see if we can get a better case to actually, there we go. So this is the last case that we actually did. Um, so if it's only going up, or, I mean, to the sides, and if we hit it, let's say we're going to hit it, oh, what? Oh, duh. That's because we need to go in here into the panel one game object, drag ourselves into here. Um, we need to make sure that this paddle, the ball collision script contains the actual paddle. Uh, what we can also do is if we don't want to do that, we can just say, okay, let's start. Private void start. We, if we just want to make sure that it's automatic, we can just say um, paddle equals get component. And for paddle, this will ensure that we actually have. Um, our pedal and we'll say if only if the pedal is null so we don't have to check if it's actually not null um, okay so let's do it again okay cool same thing so just wait till it gets here and we'll go up Boom. There we go. So now we change the direction of the ball. So we'll wait when it comes back and then we'll go down or on its opposite. So we're going to move it back up. No, actually down because it's going to bounce up here. Oh, missed it. <laughs> anyway, it's going to pretty slow, but anyway, it works. All right. If you enjoy my videos, hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't already. Click on the bell icon to get notified when new videos get uploaded. So the next thing of the challenge was uh, to make the wall bounce change their position and the collider size to match the screen as the resolutions change. Now this is not gonna be um, once the game started, it only happens on startup, okay? So, we're going to go into camera bounce, and first need to have a list. We'll just say that it is a game object, and we'll call it bound, wall bounce, and we'll initialize it like that. Once we have done this with the camera, um, we are going to go through each one of these. Okay. First, the first thing that we got to do is get the box collision collider. D, call it collider, uh, to D. Okay. So we're going to say, well bound, delete the component, 
box collider to D. Once we get that, um, we also need the ball collision script. Call it B collision. And boop. component. A little thing about get component is that you don't want to do it every frame. So we're cache. Um, if we wanted to ever get something from somewhere, like if we ever wanted to get a component from anywhere here, um, we would want to do it on the start as much as possible so that we can cache it. Um, because looking through this, every frame can be um, bad, potentially. Um, we're not doing that right now. We think the only place we're actually doing it is here, but this only gets called when we collide, so it's not that bad. Um, but if you would have this in like an update function like this, um, and that would be pretty it wouldn't be that great. So you, you want to make sure that if you do use get component a lot in here, um, you actually want to cache it somehow so that you don't look for it every time. Okay, so uh, so now we got a chain. See, okay. Um, we got the, this and we get a chain. Check to see if which one it is right so if the name of this contains top it's going to be the top and if it's the bottom then it contains the bottom right okay so now what we do is we get the trans well, damn it my bounds what the hell oh uh, I'm getting the wall bounds one that's the list we don't want that we want to make sure we get the game object um so what we're going to be doing pretty much is we're going to be positioning it first where it needs to go. So this one needs to go on top right, of the screen. And the way we do this is pretty easy. Um, we already have a camera bounds and we create it up there. So if camera bounds exists, uh, we might need to check this uh, if it does exist but we won't yet <laughs> we're gonna get the max bounce y uh, and we're gonna go um, half of the height of this collider so it's half because the actual collider's height is going to be one okay so we position it above the camera and now we want to resize the collider to resize the collider which is collider 2d we call the size and this we have to do pretty much the same thing um, and so we are going to make sure that this collider the, the width of it ex, um, reaches the um, the camera bounds the the size of the screen. So we're gonna go. We're gonna get the max bounds x position because that's the width, and we're gonna times it by two because the max bounds is half of the actual bounce. So we're going to times it by two. And for the height, it's going to be one, like we said earlier. 
Um, and now the collision, we got to set the normal, um, which we don't have that yet. We're going to pretty much set it the way it was. So it's going to be facing down. Uh, so, okay. Now let's go back into this one and let's make a function call set normals. And we're just pretty much going to pass a vector 3. I'm going to do that. I'm going to say this for normal direction. And close new normals. If you don't know what a normal is, and I know I didn't really explain this on the last videos, um, it pretty much is the direction in which the um, the wall is facing. Um, if you know about graphics, um, each object has faces, and the way we see those faces and the way the computer calls them to draw is through normals. The normal, if it's facing the direction of the camera, it tells you that it is facing you, so you will draw it. If it's facing away from you, that means it's you're not seeing it, so it's you don't want to draw that part. Um, it's similar to that, um, in which we're using it to tell us the direction in which the wall is pointing at. Okay, all right. So now let's copy this and paste that. Okay, so the bottom is going to be pretty much the same thing, but instead we're going to be using the min bounds, and we're going to add or minus half of the height. Um, let's see. This is going to be totally the same because we still want it to reach all of it on the width and the normals is going to be one because it's facing up okay and okay so now we're gonna deal with the left one so for the left one we're gonna work with the similar to this so we just want to move it here and instead of using the Y, we're going to use the X um, because we want to move it to the left. So we actually want min bounds minus 5, but 0 0.5, not 5. And that's 0. Um, you want to make sure that the Y extends all the way the y, on the Y. So we're going to be using that. And the normals are going to be facing to the right. I'm just going to copy that. And, okay, so lastly, we're going to use, we're going to set the right. And what we're going to be doing is similar, but instead of using the min, we're going to be using the max and adding to it half. Um, this is the same, and this is going to be negative one. And that's it. I believe that is it. All right, so let's go ahead and test it out, see if it works. And for that, we're going to be using we're going to be doing this. Let's drag this guy in a little bit so that we can play around. Um, and so this is what we got so far, right? And we just got to make sure that we put in all of these. So we got top, bottom, left. And right. Don't forget to save.
save and let's press play so now if you see it we actually have the bounds scaling to whatever dimensions we want right so let's say that we actually want it something I don't know maybe like let's put it down here <laughs> we'll have like this weird thing um, and we're gonna move this guy over here and if we play it again you can see that they all properly scale to fit the bounds of the camera awesome <laughs> that's pretty pretty cool and we can still play it um, we can still collide with the top and bottom um, this would be pretty long to play because the ball is going to bounce up and down um, unless you change its direction but anyway let's um, let's move on okay so that's pretty much how you scale things in your game. Let me know in the comments down below what you learned today and what you thought about this video. Um, let's see. So what I want to do now is I'll, whenever we are playing the game, I want the sides, these sides, to actually reset the ball whenever the um, the ball passes um, passes the paddle essentially and goes off the screen. So, um, and then we'll reset it probably in the middle, and then it'll get a random. Uh, we'll it'll get like a random direction again and it'll start going in a different direction. Um, we'll, we'll think about that later, how we want to do this. But let's first get that going. So we're going to go back to the scene, make sure that we grab these. And we we don't want this thing to Okay, yeah, so we don't want this on these, right? Remove. And we're going to name this to, I don't know, go left. And go right. Now we do have to make a change here. Um, actually, Yes, we do, because we still we're keeping left and right so that they can actually expand. Um, but we are not going to be messing with the box ball collision. So we actually we could leave it there, but we know we don't have it, so why bother? Um, And okay, so we pretty much just want to make sure that this also scales, right? And we are going to be adding a new script. And we're going to call it goal or something like that. All right, so what does this need? So we know that we want to collide with the ball, essentially, like we were doing on the other one. So we can actually grab this guy. And go. We'll do that. But instead of, well actually, do we want to do it on enter, or do we want to do it on stay? Or we could do it on exit. We'll do it on enter for now. And we also want to make sure that we... Um, 
pretty much do this. We want to get the ball. Make sure it's the ball. Then we want to get the ball component. We don't care about reflecting it back. But um, we want a way to actually um, know if whose goal this is, right? So we're going to need some kind of enumeration. Player goal, I don't know. Let's say player one, player two, and sets. And we're going to let the users decide what to do with this. Player goal. Default it to one. And this will get hooked up to whenever we start working on, uh, let's see, on score. We'll be going back to the script. So let's see. Yeah, we just want to reset the ball. So we want to just say, okay, ball, one ball. Transform position equals new vector zero. I mean three zero 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 and ball direction equals new um let's do let's see we already have a random thing here if I remember correctly. So let's just call Let's just make a new function here that we can just call called get random direction. And since it's part of the ball, we don't have to assign it anything. We just copy this whole thing. And oops, just that. No. Just that. <laughs> Put it in here. And we want to call it here and here as well. So instead of doing that, get random all direction. We can also do something for this one for the setting the position at zero. Um, do we need to? Probably not. Oh well. And we'll just do something here. Um, like a debug for later on. So we're going to say if it's player one. Gonna say debug log error format, and we're gonna type in player two scored, which we don't need the format. I just need that. Scored, and that's pretty much it. Okay, so let's make sure it compiles, and we'll drag in the go to both of these. And I guess left is going to be player one, and right is going to be player two. So that. Make sure that they're still in here. Go left and right, yep. And we are gonna check it out, see if it works. So, oh, it'll go back. 
over here. If it goes, oh, yeah, yeah, it works. Cool. So now we're getting in the console here. Um, player one scored. Player one scored. Player two scored. Player one scored. Player one scored. Player one scored. Player two scored, and what, etc. So we're winning because <laughs> we don't have any opponents. All right, so let's actually delay it. Now, a good way to delay it is through coroutines. What a coroutine is, um, it's pretty much, if you're familiar with any other type of programming, and if you have done threading, um, it's kind of like that. It's kind of like a thread, but it's not really a thread. It's just, it's just mimicking a thread. Um, and if you don't know what a thread is, then I encourage you to Google it. <laughs> Essentially what a thread is, is another process that your program can ask for. Um, so you would ask the operating system that you need another thread to work with, right? This is pretty much a parallel instance of your application that runs alongside the main thread. Every process in pretty much any operating system uses threads. Uh, this is so that it can do multitasking and all that stuff. Um, so pretty much when you use a different thread, um, you can do work simultaneously. Well, if, if we wouldn't use this thread, and if we had like a timer function that we needed to wait until a certain timer was done, and then we needed to proceed, then the whole game would actually stop. The, what good, the good thing about threads is that you can actually run a timer somewhere else and stop something from happening until that timer is completed while still keeping the game, you know, or the application running. Um, so that's pretty much what we're going to be doing before we can actually, um, before we actually call these because we don't want to do it right away we want to have maybe like a like once the the ball goes out into the goal we'll pretty much stop gameplay for a little bit and say like show maybe like player scored or player whatever scored or whatever change the um change the um score if from the ui and we also want to maybe have like a timer that goes three, two, one, and boom, and then, you know, launches the ball again. Okay. So, to do this, we use this as the return type enumerator, i enumerator. It is an interface, hence the i enumerator. We won't go into that because this out of, that's out of the scope of this video. Um, but we're gonna name it uh, reset ball co, and we're gonna say yield. Uh, what was it? This was it. Uh, yield return new. Wait for seconds and how many seconds do we want let's say five seconds and after that we actually need to pass in here the ball so we can have some reference And if we wanted to, we could actually cache this, like, and then compare it again. But we're not going to bother to do that right now. Um, so, okay, so now we have that. And now we got to call it. So to call it, we call start coroutine. And we say reset ball co. And we pass in the ball. Boom. And there we go. So now 
when we play this. When it goes out of bounds, it'll wait five seconds and it'll reappear after five seconds. Boom. There we go. That is much nicer. <laughs> So let's see if it works on my side. So far we got three points. Oh, now player two scored, even though player two is not there. And there we go. So now we have um, a way of scoring, kind of. We now need to make a system that keeps track of the score and maybe have a high score system or something eventually. Um, if we wanted to add another panel, we could. We just need to add a new one. Let's call this panel 2. Move it to be at 9. This one's going to be negative 9. So if we just leave it like this um, and change the actual normal to be negative one for the second panel, if we just do this, we'll just, you know, do that, which if you're just playing with one person, <laughs> could be interesting, maybe. But if you were playing with two people, then we would have to change this player paddle, and we would actually need um, we would need to whenever we get the um, registered player, we would need let's see what are we doing here. Okay, we got the player ID here. So, I guess based on the player ID, we could change the keys. So, we could be like, okay. Uh, is that not accessible? It's not accessible. We go here, we do want to have access to it. Actually, that's not going to work. We can just say public player ID, player ID, get this player ID. And I'm guessing it doesn't like it because of that. Oh, what is it? Only assignment. Oh, duh. Return it. Gotta return it. Okay. So the reason we're not putting a getter is because we don't want to change it. We don't want people to actually change it. The only people the the only system that can change things for this player is this. So that's why we didn't put a getter. Okay, so now we gotta put paddle again. So if controller player ID if it's zero, that's player one. So we don't really want to change anything there, and so only if it's player one. And if it is, what is this? Oh, we already had a player ID. We can 
just let this guy use that, but whatever. We just duplicated something. <laughs> we'll fix that later on. So let's see for let's say that for up it wanted the arrows. The up arrow. And for down it wanted the down arrow. If it was a player two, right? Um, maybe later on we can create a system that would be okay. Um, maybe we could be we could get different like a table of or a database of different different keys or key pairs or I don't know something to let the player or the developer you know. Oh, well, that's interesting. So. Our player one is actually player two, and our player two is actually player one. Interesting. Boom. So now you can move them independently of each other. And that's it. Okay, I think we're going to be wrapping up for today. Um, if you guys have any questions, leave them on the comments down below. Don't forget to subscribe and like this video if you learned something today. Um, I don't think I have any challenges for you this week. But um, I will think of something next week for sure. I hope you guys like this video as well. I like making it. Um, and if you guys want to support me, go to Patreon and you can support me there. If you guys want something, want to see something, let me know in the comments down below. And I'll see you next time. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, smash that like button. This is to let YouTube know that this video was worth watching so other people can find it. Don't forget to subscribe and click on the bell icon to get notifications when new videos get uploaded. Stay tuned for our next video. Hey guys, how's it going? If you guys want to learn how to make a game engine from scratch, a game from scratch, or anything from scratch, not using a game engine like Unity or Unreal Engine, if you guys are interested in making your own, let me know in the comments down below. Don't forget to connect with us on social media. If you want a way to support what I do, uh, head over to my Patreon page. The links are in the description down below. Thank you for watching and see you next time.